We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles, to gadget reviews, Man, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges, to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs, bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. Hello, my name is Ben, this is Jamie, and this is Fridge Camp. Now, do you like showing off at dinner parties? If you do, then you might want this next gadget. It's called a sphere... A, a sphere... A sphere... Sphe, sphere... Spherificator. Two chefs testing one bit of kit recommended by you. And today, it's this, a spherificator. It allows you to turn virtually any liquid into caviar-shaped pearls that will produce up to 500 pearls per minute. It's a great tool for foodies, chefs, bartenders, and anyone who loves to entertain. It comes with a tagline, go ahead, play with your food. And I think today is gonna to be a playground. It comes with a bunch of the chemicals so that you can create endless possibilities. You guys suggested it, we bought this with our own monies and we have not spoken to these people, so let's have a play. It would be interesting if it works because this is something that you only really get in professional kitchen. I see this today as just a bit of fun and to some, play some games because I don't think, I don't know, nobody's really going to use it, are they? Well, Ben, as you well know, I'm all about fun, so <laughs> shall we get started? Number one for my fancy dinner party, I'm thinking some nice smoked salmon and sour cream blinis and I want chive pearls. How did I get dragged into prepping your dinner party? To make it, we're gonna blend chopped fresh chives into a salty water solution. James, our sodium chloride solution is ready. It looks a lot like water. With a pinch of salt. <laughs> oh, damn. And then while it's going round, drop in a mixture of sugar and sodium alginate that have been combined. Strain it, leave it to rest, and then add it to your spherificator. Wow, this is gonna be so fascinating. So you stir about a teaspoon of calcium chloride into 500 ml of water, and that becomes the calcium bath that we're gonna drop all of our liquids into. I haven't even put any, any balls in liquid yet and I still, I already think this is just not worth it. Because this whole process was developed in like the 1940s, wasn't it? It was only much later that they applied it to food and molecular gastronomy. I don't know, Ben. Mixture rested. And now it just goes in here. And then you, over and here. I, yeah. Oh, you've gone, you put it all in. I want 500. <laughs> in order to get the perfect balls, it has to be the right height above the water so that it falls. Okay. So the tip what? of the needle should be six inches from the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Behave. That's what it says. Behave. And if you want to know what six inches is, James, it's about a banana. So from about six inches above the water, you drop it in. 500 pearls per minute, up to. This is the moment. Does that look about right? Hang on, let me get my banana out. Kick off a bit. There we go. Imagine if it just doesn't work. I mean, it looks really awful. I might actually get to 500. You might actually get to 500, but I don't know if any of them are actually spherical. It looks like pond water, James. I don't think they're supposed to float. Because the instruction is stir the water, Leave not the pearls. Leave to set for one minute. No, 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 Leave to set. What's wrong with you? You're just disappointed that it hasn't worked. You should have my mindset where I'm happy it hasn't worked. <laughs> we might have balls this first one up. That would be funny if we'd made any balls. <laughs> We don't have any balls. I remember reading a comment somewhere that said if you're not careful and you do it too low, then you can end up with more like sperm shape. And if it's too high... But I didn't like, get it wrong. We measured it with a banana. What are you on about? <laughs> no, no, I'm not blaming. I'm just saying you end up with more sperm shape. If it's... We measured it with a banana and you're blaming me for if the fact that it hasn't worked. The water, you hit discs because as it hits the water, they flatten out. So have we got any spheres? It's kind of ball shaped. Great. Balls of fire. Does that look like the type of ball that you know and love? <laughs> They're not balls though, are they? <laughs> you didn't need to do that. They do pop and they do taste of chive. The start to my dinner party, absolute baller rocking out the smoked salmon and chive bellinis. Right, bottoms up. They look great, but with the way we've plated them, it's not making a huge difference. 
I, I don't know what's happened chemically because I've no idea what we're doing. But <laughs> <laughs> I think I think what's happened is that they're not popping. They're they're jelly all the way through. A very subtle chive, but because we've blended the chive into the water, they're not like chive. They're just like chive. It looks intriguing, and if you were serving it on something else, it is a nice vegetarian, vegan alternative to caviar and, in, and a weird colour that shouldn't be there. But on that, the flavour's not doing it for me. Honestly, you're such a nice person. Okay, chive caviar, average start. Next up, balsamic bubbles. For the balsamic pearls, we're going to blend sodium citrate with water. That was fascinating. Change its colour. Then as it blends on a low speed, we're going to mix in sugar and sodium alginate. And then we slowly pour in the balsamic vinegar as it mixes again, and then leave it to rest for 30 to 45 minutes. So the science here is that once you put the sodium alginate into a calcium chloride solution, it forms a gel. It does that best at a relatively neutral pH. If you're trying to spherificize, I make spheres, out of something more acidic, like vinegar, you need to balance it out with sodium citrate. Uh, are you going to be able to explain to me how it forms these things? Ben, I didn't care that much. Two molecules of sodium alginate plus a water bath of calcium chloride gives you two molecules of sodium chloride, which we don't want, that's salt, we're not really going to use that, but it will give you what you do want, which is something here, which is maths, um, C12, H14O12, no, because that's where the calcium bonds in, so it's 14 calcium zero 12. That's the bit that forms the gel. I cannot wait for that to go onto a YouTube video and for a quarter of a million people to see it. Does that make sense? Oh. To us, the balsamic mixture looked just too gelatinous to fall with gravity through our spherificator. So we've done a few by hand just to see if the mix is going to work. It's worked. So we'll drain these off and now we'll try with the machine. Again, more like tadpoles. is a talking point at the table. We'll do anything for a talking point at the table, even if it's questionable. Before we try these, what we actually did was create our own, and we created some with the device, and we put our own on the plate. We backed ourselves. They're certainly bigger. We use like a, a wider nozzle on a squeezy bottle as opposed to the device through a thin needle. They, they look like they're gonna burst. On its own first. Cheers. Cheers. More so than the chive, it's still not a pop, is it? No, it's it's more like a jelly thingy. What is nicer with these is they have more flavour because of the vinegar, but it's not like acidic. It's kind of already been mellowed out. Okay, so we've tried ours. We're going to try the ones that came from the spherificator. They're bigger, but they're not better. Neither of them are right, are they? No. On their own, they're a pop of balsamic. But they don't taste of anything. Like, if you put a drop of that balsamic vinegar on a tomato or on the mozzarella, you would taste sweet, acidic balsamic yeah. vinegar. And with that, you'd, they just disappear completely. It has been you diluted. I think we've got the bowl rolling, though. I think we need to move on. I need a gin. Number three, I think I need a gin and tonic. So let's make cucumber pearls. One English cucumber, peeled, Water and sodium citrate in and blended, then add cucumber, then while it's going round, add in our sugar and sodium alginate mixture. Looking smooth. Looking smooth. I wonder if we shouldn't have peeled it. Does it say peeled? It does say peeled. It... Oh, maybe it doesn't say peeled. It's just pureed. It I just pureed. read it from a distance. Wow, we cannot even do the most simple, basic scientific <laughs> stuff. We shouldn't be allowed to test this. We shouldn't be allowed we to do anything. We shouldn't be allowed to test this. Why bother, honestly? Like, wh why Should bother? we start again? No, I can't take it again. Remind me to book an optician's appointment when I get home. I'm not sure it's the glasses, but it's a problem. It's definitely got kind of mucus feel about it, hasn't it? it smells cucumbery. Let's put it straight in. I've replaced our <laughs> bath and our draining water. 
I don't think I need a banana anymore. I think I can guess. Oh, you're getting good. Uh, which have you gone big or small nozzle? <laughs> I've gone big. Pretty spherical. Still not particularly big. Gut reaction. These are our best confetti pearls bubbles yet. Application. I'm not sure I want that floating on the top of my drink. Taste-wise, it's it's fine. It's cucumbery, and I don't mind cucumber in a gin and tonic. It's just still not. I don't want it as a drinking experience. They're so close to popping, though. Best ones yet, and shape-wise, I'll agree. Best ones yet. Okay, I think we need to go sweet. Number four, blood orange beads on our cheesecake. So far, we've tried the chive, the balsamic vinegar and the cucumber. They have all been recipes from the little booklet. Now we're going off-piste with blood orange juice. They've all been so easy and worked so well, but why not just try something that's not in the book? So we're gonna try and calculate something that's roughly the right amount of all of our ingredients based on logic to get something that sets. Imagine if this works so well. 250 ml of that. Done. Three quarters of a teaspoon of sodium citrate. There must be a way to keep the colour. You lose all the colour as soon as the sodium citrate goes in it. It has to go in it because the pH is too low for the reaction to work. And then we'll stick to the same ratio of sodium alchemate and sugar as before. Blend it, strain it, rest it. Then we'll add it to our device. James, I'm up 50-50 here. Device and handheld. We can do 50-50. Let's go wild, then. This is not something you just knock up midweek, is it? And I think even if you're doing it for your dinner party at the weekend or as a bartender, you're doing it to impress, to go the extra mile, for the wow factor, for the experience and the talking point. I wonder if molecular gastronomy, we're, we're past that. We're back to basics now with food. Less is yeah, more in a place. Less is more. Nature. Back to nature. Ready? Have you got a little something, little something trapped in yours? Yeah, I think I do. No, you're right, James, it's definitely not 500 a minute. I'm still having a ball. These are my first balls that have dropped. We've come to the fourth recipe. We've tried to put our balls through this, and it's busted. Oh, it's working again, James. Okay, quick. Look at yeah, those, those James. We're pretty chuffed with those. It's actually more satisfying to do it yourself. Oh, no. What's going on there? We had a go with the blood orange. We've ended up with the same batch, which is rested for the same amount of time. Through our 90 pound machine, we get that. By hand, we get that. Our version is much more spherical. Definitely not 500 a minute, but who needs 500 balls? Number four, I think it looks the most like it's supposed to look. Yeah, it's still, the colour is still not quite there. It's not as I'm vibrant as I was hoping. Try it. Right, try it. I think they are the best. They're citrusy, they're orange, they're fragrant. They're not like zingy hit you in the face. They're still quite diluted, but they are the best in terms of the mouthfeel. It's a nice little touch to round off a dessert. And I think it looks better on a dessert than perhaps on a salad. And certainly better than floating in a drink. If you try them on their own, they taste citrusy and blood orangey. As soon as you put a cheesecake with it, you can't taste it anymore. So are they necessary? Would a blood orange syrup be much nicer? Would a segment of blood orange be much nicer? Yes. Okay. I think this wow. is style of a substance, that was easy. but I like the fact that it's encouraged us to play. I'm not convinced I would recommend anyone go and buy a spherificator, but it has encouraged us to play and think about plating, and, and that's a positive thing. I just think perhaps today was a slight curveball. It made us think a lot about flavour and colour and texture, more so than we usually do, which I quite liked. Go ahead, play with your food. Well, I think it's fair to say that that was quite an honest review of the Spherificator. Um, sphere, if you want more kitchen gadget reviews like this, send us examples of weird ones that we can't pronounce and we'll try and review them and pronounce them. Otherwise, we'll see you every Wednesday, every Sunday, back in this very fridge. Until then, Spherificator. We've also built the Sorted Club, where you can get tons of foodie inspo using the PAX Midweek Meal app, discover and share restaurant recommendations using the Eat app, listen and contribute to our Feast Your Ears podcast and send us ideas for new cookbooks you'll receive throughout the year. Check it all out by heading to sorted.club. And now a blooper.